Loud has been the pillar of Brazilian Valorant for years. Since its inception in 2022, they have dominated the Brazilian region, the Americas region, and the international stage. Less, Radiant 1 player turned into VCT's craziest movement demon. Sassi, the best initiator to come from Brazil. Pancada, a top smokes player in the world. Sada, a player who is widely regarded as one of the best in-game leaders of all time. And Aspas, the undisputed best duelist player in the Americas. This is the story of the rise and fall of Brazil's greatest roster, Loud. Before we get started, do you know what I hate more than a team that can't win? A team that struggles due to lag and high ping in game. I personally play with my best friend Shuya on Japanese servers, and the ping is always an issue. That's why I started to use Gear Up Booster, so I can easily lower my ping and prevent packet loss. And it works in every region as well, and is super easy to use with only one click and you're ready to go. Me and other content creators like Joel's and Teats have been using it. If you typically struggle with 100 ping, Gear Up Booster can optimize your connection and possibly lower it down up to 50 ping. And it's especially helpful for people who suffer from bad network infrastructure and prevent packet loss. It works on Valorant, Fortnite, and many other games. Check out how it helped me lower my ping not only in the Japanese server, but also here in a local server in NA. Thank you to Gear Up Booster. You can check them out in the link in the description below. Now, back to the loud video. Back in 2021, Loud wasn't even an esports org in Valorant. The professional scene was in its early stages as most regions were separated by their servers. LATAM, Brazil, and North America were all separate leagues. Les was bouncing between several teams from Dogs, Quincalos da Galaxia, Jaguar Esports, Galaxy Carex, Tropina do TikTok, and was the number one Radiant in Brazilian leaderboards. Saucy jumped games from League of Legends to Valorant and played on a free agent team then landing on Vikings with Sadak. Pancara was playing with Star Horizons and Fugechis, finding some mild success winning Copa Ranking Season 3 and GG Well Played 1. Aspas and Les would have played each other in the Champions Brazil Stage 3 in the match between Jaguar Esports and Slick. Team Vikings and Star Horizons wouldn't even meet each other despite being in the same bracket and would both lose 2-0 to Liberty. They would meet each other in the lower finals where Team Vikings would beat them 2-0. Vikings would lose to Vivo Keatstars later that tournament. Vikings would qualify as the final seed for Brazil at Champions 2021. They would beat Crazy Raccoon but struggle against Gambit and eventually ended up losing to Team Secret. Saucy and Sadak, frustrated with the results, decided to leave Team Vikings and asked Pancara to join their team. But he would have to play with Les and Aspas who at that time were perceived as wild cards. After denying another lucrative offer, Pancada joined the team. On January 14, 2022, Pancada y Amigos would be formed and they would play in VCT Brazil Series 1, where they would drop only one map in seven matches. The team would even destroy Pancada's former team, Star Horizons. It was safe to say that the team had worked out beautifully. And while they dominated the open qualifiers, there was an organization that took notice of all their efforts. Loud was a huge influencer organization and was the first Brazilian org to ever reach a billion views on YouTube. The org had a free fire team as that is one of Brazil's largest mobile esports and was looking to add another tax shooter by delving into the PC world of Valorant. On February 3rd, 2022, Pancada y Amigos would finally become Loud Valorant. Loud would go on to dominate the group stage of challengers where Sasi, Sarak, and Pancada would be able to overcome Liberty, TBK, and Team Vikings. In the upper semifinals, they would have to play their former team, Team Vikings, and handily defeated them 13-4 on both maps. 
Vivo Kid Stars would prove to be no challenge for them. Not even in the grand finals against Ninjas in Pajamas, they would drop one map, and they qualified for Masters Reykjavik as the number one seed. To say this was Brazil's super team would be an understatement. This was the rise of a legendary team. At Masters Reykjavik, Loud were a team that wasn't on most people's radar, at least in the big regions. Brazilian fans knew that Loud were demolishing every other team in Brazil, and were going to be dangerous. Most North American fans had the Guard or Optic being the winners. EMEA had FPX, but they couldn't make the tournament because of travel restrictions. APAC, like usual, was rooting for Paper Rex. G2 EMEA, Paper Rex, The Guard, and Loud all had buys because they were the top seed of their regions. Loud was set up for success, but it's not as easy as it seems. Loud would have to face Team Liquid. This Team Liquid roster had made the international stage because Fun Plus Phoenix EMEA could not make the event due to travel restrictions. Loud would face them on Icebox, where they got a really close game. Team Liquid was relatively formidable, and managed to destroy Loud on the following map, beating them 13-3 on Haven. In the last map, Loud would have a very close match on Ascent, but Loud would be able to close out the map 13-10. Loud had beaten what realistically was the third best team in EMEA. Liquids was no slouch either, with talent that at the time showed a lot of promise. Scream, Nivera, Soulcast, and Yampi. This was just the beginning. To show that they were a threat, they would need to beat another top team, and the opportunity would come in the form of G2 Esports. G2 was not like the G2 you see in Americas. They actually are an EMEA organization, and at the time they had a roster with veterans of the region, Hoodie, Niyuki, Mixwell, Evova, and Medo, and this roster was the number two seed of EMEA. Loud and Ascent wiped the floor with G2, as they could not find a way of stopping Aspas and Les. Both ended with almost identical KDs on map 1. 21, 12, and 3 for Aspas, and 20, 12, and 15 for Les. On Breeze, Loud would get off to an 8-4 start, but almost choked the lead on the defense side. Luckily for them, their lead was sizable enough, and with the pistol rounds and rounds 16, 21, and 24, they would beat G2 to 0. This was it. Loud was now on the international limelight as one of the top teams in the entire world. They proved that they were much better than their EMEA counterparts, and now they were in the upper finals. The road to the trophy was clear as day, and they only had one more opponent to face. And to understand who these guys were, we need to rewind this tournament all the way back to group stage. In the group stage, there were several high caliber teams. DRX were considered the kings of Korean Valorant, with Mako, Stax, Buzz, RB, and Zest. Zeta Division, the darlings of Japanese Valorant. Crew, Latam's sole representative. But there was one team that was widely considered by many one of the favorites to win it all. Envy had just recently merged with Optic, and they had what some considered the greatest lineup of North American players ever. The Iceman, Marv, the duo of Crashes and Victor, the brains of the operation, Finesse, and what some considered to be the rising best player in the world, El Diablo, yay. In the group stage, they lost a bizarre game against Sertia, but after the loss, they would win against Crew and get their revenge on Sertia, both games being 2-0 sweeps. The way the playoff brackets would be scheduled would find Optic Gaming on the opposite side of Loud. Optic Gaming would have to reclaim the North American throne by defeating the Guard, as they had lost to them before. Once that was complete, they would have to play DRX, and after what some considered to be the match of the tournament, Optic Gaming would stand tall. Loud now found themselves an opponent that would match them in every sense of the word. 
On Fracture, Lau would play a very standard composition of Ray's Bridge, Chamber, Viper, and Brimstone, but Optic would play a mirror comp with the exception of Neon, and Lau did not know how to react to such a composition. Loud could not win against the aggressive Neon that Victor was playing. Ye and Victor were taking complete control of sites. Ye was getting lurk kills and Victor's entry was devastating for Loud. Things had spiraled out of control, as Optic had a complete chokehold on Fracture. Loud would lose the map 13-2. On Ascent, we would see why these two teams were so evenly matched. For every round Loud would win, Optic would get the next one. And this went on for a while, as both teams had their moments where people were the heroes of their game. Pancada even had an insane clutch on defense that prevented Optic from winning two in a row. At half, we would get a 7-5 score, and sure enough, Loud would win the pistols and we were tied once again, 7-7. Optic started to make several mistakes. Loud did an impressive job in finding the cracks in Optic's teamwork and post plants leading them to run away with the Ascent 13-8. It's 1-1 and we're on the final map of Icebox. Both teams are one map away from a Masters Grand Final. Ninguém marcando. Só possível da dúvida daí, ó. Abriu, Les. Gigante. Gigante, Les. Que clutch importante, rapaz. É ponto da Laura. Não. É só perigo agora pra ele. O Yei chegou com 5 de HP, faz dupla batida. Tem um Les na retaguarda ali protegendo. Encontrou os dois, já levou o primeiro. O Les consegue. O ângulo, faz a punição e ele levou o seu. Mas o Art vem as pinhas, vai as pinhas. Fica sem bala, vai voando o Art. Gira aspas. O Aspas surpreende, leva o primeiro. O amarelo, onde o Marv de frinta ele muito bem. Já fez barulho. Fez barulho por cima, o Les já sabe, vai clicar de novo, o Marv tem que aparecer, e o Les, e o Les, o Les não vai deixar esse cara ganhar, é ponto da Loud! Procurando algum avanço, o Astro vai entrar em ação agora, não conseguiu buscar o abate, continua ali por cima, vai tomar na testa, mas enquanto isso a Loud, a Loud vai conseguir os abates, o Sassi aparece Sassi. na partida, disparo de Operator, não disparo. e fugiu. Veneninho também não deixa o plantio acontecer. Será que deixa? O Fenes clicou, não plantou, quer quebrar a barreira. Olha o Victor buscando o jogo pra surpreender. Já foi vistado, já viu muita gente também. Saci, oh, chegou oh. bem. O pancada levou dele. E aí? Oh, a Loud! Oh. A Loud tá na grande final! Loud secured their spot in Grand Finals without losing a single match. It was a celebration for the entire country. From a free agent team that was betting on themselves to joining the most popular org in Brazil destroying the Brazilian scene and now carrying the hopes of Brazilian Valorant. They had managed to make a stage no other Brazilian team had ever reached. But this wasn't the end. Optic Gaming found themselves on the brink of elimination, and they had to face Zeta Division, who were the darlings of the tournament and had made an incredible run in the lower bracket winning the hearts of the world with their underdog story. But Optic had revenge in their hearts, and they did not care about anybody else's story. They wanted the trophy, and by hell or high water, they were going to get it. O Lá estava no ato, os rastreadores vêm chegando agora na... Fiz pressa com o ultimate do que eu ia atrás do, do Spike Side que o jogador... O jogador chegando pelo Zabaz o Marved vai brilhando. de também o Yei de repente vem ali a falha técnica não aparece. Vai da C, dá essa volta, tá jogando uma vantagem. É mais muito esse round agora. O é. consegue mais uma... Essas situações de quando não é 5x5 e fica aqui no meio do seu... Passou a de barreira pela double. E aí avança o FNS, leva o Lass, cai a casa. Vai pegar dois jogadores cegos. O Victor junto com ele, situação muito IC aqui em direção à areia. Deixou muito espaço pro Yei, com o Marvid e Victor, né? Dois aqui pra buscar esse... E aí, dentro da dois, vai cair daqui. Vencendo uns os mapas, né? Eu não sei quem é o jogador. Porque assim, são tantos rounds, gente, até... Já tô eu preocupado agora também. Tinta na direita. Abre o pixel justo aí, foi imo. Meio tem, vai dando a volta, já sabe da posição do DEP. É o Marvin de quem finaliza. Optic Gaming swept Zeta Division 3-0 and earned their spot in the Grand Finals with Loud. The tension was palpable. Two of the best teams are on the main stage of a Masters event with completely different narratives. Loud is here to prove 
that the Brazilian super team can bring Brazil a trophy and Optic Gaming to prove that they can win when it matters most. On Ascent, Optic are still on a roll from their last game. They get a four round lead and Loud is working with a massive deficit. It's looking dark, six to one and FNS and Ye are both are at 10-2 KDs. Loud calls a timeout. It takes until 8-2 for Loud to get another round. Even with Aspas' 3k, Loud cannot get a round. The half ends at 10-2. Loud desperately need to come up with a way to catch up to Optic. Era pela região do Jardim. O Marsh tenta um TP, o pancada se livra dele. Vamos pancada, três abates dele. E o Dog tenta enfrentar. O pancada insiste. Chega o Sadak Manito e curtou a distância. Vamos lá, fazer a cobertura. Aquela caiu no Marsh assim. Faz eliminação. Cresceu de uma maneira insana. Mas o Sadak vai contestar mesmo assim. Olha o, Man o Sadak Mania. Olha o perigo. Vai Alguém chegar. Vai cima. O Aspas estava eu. Não. De novo. Novo time não. Aspas, deu aspas nele. O pancada Vamos. busca o seu. E agora? Isso, Isso. Tem colocar no chão. Les, tem uma porta no caminho. Vai, escapa. Que isso? Ele pulou. Ele escapou. Vamos, Les. Cancela esse cara. Eu Mas aí, o tempo todo, meus amigos. Mas ela pegou de lado pelo Saci. O aspas. O site era um flut muito bem jogado pelo Optic. O FNS estava marotadaço meio. Só que o aspas desconfiou demais. Pegou um duplo abate ali. Que jogada do garoto Aspas agora e vibra demais. Loud clawed their way back to an 11-9 scoreline. But not winning on the defense round really hurt Loud, and Optic would take the map 13-9. Loud's bind starts out disastrous as they lose the buy up round, leading Victor to get a 3k with a Bulldog. Loud tie it back up 2 2, but Optic gets two more rounds thanks to Crashy's clutch. Ye is doing El Diablo things and Marth is winning his duels. And all of a sudden, Optic are up 7 2. But Loud doesn't want to go quiet. Chega o Aspas, levou primeiro. Puxa o ultimate. É pra garantir. É pra resolver. É ponto da Loud. Ele chegando por cima, Sassi. O Sassi é um monstro. Garante se abate, tá de pé. E vai derrubar o terceiro dele. Tá na B. Nenhum tipo, outro tipo de round. Eles de fato estavam dominando o Ruka, usando ali uma composição puxão da Astra, cartucho e tinta do Aspas, não. Eles guivaram muito. Jogadores, faz o seu estrago, resta um, ele não quer nem saber. Ele quer esse abate e não vai ter um abate pro Aspas, mas ele e aí vai encontrar mais o Les. Levou primeiro, o Les. Ah, ele vai cercando, encontrado, anulado, pancada neles. Sim. Poderia zetar ainda, a Optic poderia buscar esse round, teria recurso suficiente. Pegando, perigoso, ai, 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 perigoso é o Aspas, que vai levar mais um, Victor, não. Forte, ele quer buscar o 4K e ele vai ter quatro eliminações na rodada, ponto da Loud. B, resta um aqui, o Victor faz a eliminação e vai cair no chão, Aspas. Sabe, se ele ficou cego, ele passa o portal Deus. e ele empurra o Barbie de lá, vai enfrentar mais um. Isso, olha o Sadaki, mano. The lead Optic had has evaporated. Louder up 10 8. Optic switched their aggression level and with a marved 4k managed to win the round. Loud are still up 10 9. Loud missed time and retake, and now Optic have crawled back 10 10. Optic win one, Loud win one. Then, after a full round of trades, Loud managed to get a tiebreaker and Loud are on match point 12-11, and they're one round away from winning their first match. In the final round, it comes down to Pancada and Les. But Victor would not be denied map two or the ace. With 22 HP, Victor sends Loud into overtime. Loud's attack round is disastrous, as everywhere they go, they find themselves dying to Ye. Loud are fighting demons. Loud are now down 0-2. Breeze would be the third map, and Loud were in danger of a sweep. Loud tried its best to keep up, but for every round Loud would get, it seems like Optic would just get two. 
everyone was having their hero moments. Lá vem, lá vai, aspas, dois abates, vem, vai, vão, aspas, entra em ação, aspas, é o nome da feira. Aspas, crashes, yay, less, but Loud could not manage to disable yay or crashes. Every time Loud would try to get close to Optic's lead, Optic would find a way to extend it. Loud needed to do something, and they needed to do it quick. Bem rápido, você vai ver, o Sadak é eliminado, de cara o Asus pega o jogador, vai eliminar também o Victor, e depois contamos ali com uma leve mapa, vamos que tá buscando, vem ali a chegada, o FNS vai ao chão, aspas, derruba o terceiro. Vai conferindo, vai encontrar o adversário que garante a todo elo. Essa marca registrada não tem o que fazer. Você não vai conseguir passar, principalmente porque o Aspas ele veio pelo arco né, do meio, ele não veio pela boca da B. Então é uma ação. Lá vem a passagem, é Fenez muito marão. Mas aproveitou bem demais o posicionamento do Pabate. Os tem dois por aqui por dentro. Leva o primeiro, sem bala no Operator. É a Classic e o sonho. E aí, o Yei cercou. Acreditar que dá pra virar essa série ainda. Parei de novo pra dar esse retake. E o pancada, hein? Pegou esse abate no FNS. O Aspas ainda escutou o Yei subindo ali no muro. E a Loud garante um round dificílimo. Um round onde só o Aspas tinha ali o seu ultimate. O pancada trouxe uma Guardian. All the way, but time! I don't know if they've got enough time, I don't think they do at this point. I think he's got it. No way. Yei? Yeah, he's got it. Yei? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you cannot use the green wall against Optic! Isso, chassi! É isso, Loud! And ali, ó, um tour! Né? Tentou um ataque aéreo, mas só fez um passeio! Enquanto o Crash, meu amigo, para o Marvid, que marca! Espera o erro, aspas, não tá dando cura de chá! Vai tomar uma só o Marvid! E a Ada, corajosa, até de, demais, né? Enquanto a FNS surpreende, acertou! Dois HS, levou um primeiro jogador, o spot também, aspas, vence o duelo mesmo assim, e agora, vai cair o Crash Zaloudi! They fought their way back to an 11-11 score, and even took the lead, 12-11. Joga melhor correndo pelo mapa, né, e não uma corrida assim, desesperada, é? Brazil was ready to get their first map in the series. And Optic would deny the victory and send it into overtime again. E aí, só o Les, vamos Les, cresce pra cima deles, meu amigo. Já levou o primeiro, o Zolt, mas o Crashes encurta rapidamente e empata o jogo. Round for round, kill for kill, the fight between the two felt like they had known each other for ages. O Mario no choque machuca muito, segundo punch, ele puxa o Tour de Force pra derrubar. Round 27. And North America's leader shows his mental prowess as FNS gets a 4K. And the Viper Spit to put Loud down once again. And this was the point of no return. Pancada contra o mundo. Vem se aproximando de fininho. Encontrado, eliminado. Optic Gaming build their legacy brick by brick. The green wall of Optic make Reykjavik their own. What a performance here. Flipping breeze. Loud were struck down on the most pivotal moment of their time together. The perfect run was no more. There was only silence as North America celebrated the triumph of one of the greatest teams of all time and the payoff to their story. But Loud's story was yet unfinished. Loud had returned home devastated but there was an understanding that this team had been together for a much shorter time than Optic. But they were still one of the best teams in the world, and they would have to show it to Brazil once again. Consegue levar o Aspas, mas contra três, tá todo mundo cravado nele! 18 de vida, pancada! Consegue levar ele, e agora Sadak faz o clarão, tenta buscar o aqui, o Leste deu a volta, pega de lado e tá lá! Ele vai conseguir garantir a sessão de clutch, mas o Sadak destrói o sonho do jogador e vai pro ponto da vitória, 13 a 9, 2 a 0 pra Loud! <risos> E o último jogador vivo é o Chase, tá de Judge, na distância, não há o que ser feito. E deu loud, deu aspas, 13 a 9, 2 a 0, continua, sem perder nenhum mapa no VCT. Aí que mora o perigo, Niang, aí que mora o perigo, olha o Led, meu Deus, esse planeta é pequeno demais pra você, Led. 
muita calma, Vixen. Encontrado, eliminado. 13 a 6 e a Loud. A Loud está mais uma vez na grande final, Espaca. No cenário brasileiro, a Loud é bicampeã do VCD. Tá, tá confuso, que é a primeira vez. É isso aí, <risos> chegou a hora. A Loud é a grande campeã brasileira da segunda etapa do VCD BR. Loud were determined to prove that they were better than everybody else. Furia, Los Grandes, Stars Horizons, Game Landers, and Ninjas in Pajamas were no match for the Brazilian super team. They didn't drop a single map the entirety of Challengers 2. Their hunger for revenge was massive, and they would find themselves back on the international stage where their level of competition would be matched once again. Masters Copenhagen was here and Loud ended up being in the group stage. Accompanying them was EMEA's guild, LATAM's crew, and none other than the kings of North American Valorant, Optic Gaming. The group stage should have been a clear road for both. Optic would win their match, Loud would win their match, and they would play each other and one of them loses, and then plays the extra match, and they both go to playoffs. Right? Well, that's not how things happen. Optic would once again be cursed by their slow first match start, as they would lose to Guild Esports with the international debut of Leo and Save. Loud was in a situation much the same. They played Crew Esports. Les was having a rough time adjusting to his new role as the chamber of the team. Les went 10 and 19. Fracture would go the way of Loud, so the impact wasn't felt as much. But Haven was taken by Crew as Kesnet was playing a strong game, and Les continued to struggle on Chamber. Icebox would be a map that Loud should have won, but Crew managed to win some really goofy rounds. And somehow they managed to steal the map from Loud. Now, what was once the grand finals of a Masters event would now be the elimination of one of the best teams to touch the game. Loud started off very strong. Their home map of Ascent would prove that they were better than them as Optic struggled to find any success on the attack side. Optic on Ascent looked absolutely clueless on the attack side. And while running the chamber on the defensive side was the right idea, Loud would capitalize on the fact that historically, Optic Gaming were a very weak team on the attack side of Ascent. Loud were able to get six rounds on their attack and with Optic falling on their tendencies, Loud would secure the map. As costas, as cara, e o último segundo no meio é o Victor. Olha aqui esse smoke, complicado, o pancada se de quebrar esse que o ponto é da Loud novamente 12 a 8. Map, mas quer cravar de novo o ângulo, FNS, encontrado, hein? Já não vai ter jeito pra fechar esse mapa. Loud would take the map 13-8, but Optic Gaming would prove that they're the rivals of Loud in every way imaginable. And on Fracture, they would show that to them. Loud would once again be taken to Fracture, where they came up with a new composition to throw Optic off. And initially, it seemed that Loud had a recipe for success, even tying the game up through three. Yeah, he's feeling it. Flash goes in. Spot one. Catch one. Yay, the unthinkable. That's the first one. And apparently, even a third. Marbella show. But. Optic were veterans on this map, and they had the better composition. With hero plays from Ye and Marv, Optic would end the half 8-4. And despite the side switch, Loud were not able to match Optic, and Loud would lose the map 8-13. We are going the distance, and rightly so, Mike. Of course, the final map would be an absolute battle of the wills, where both teams played like their lives were on the line. Traz um 3x2, é só o Ye, Ye, ele abre bem. E pelas laterais, e o Victor já sabe onde tá o pancada, ser atingido pelo espectador. Chajou. Olha só, hein? Vê. Já vem pro outro lado, faz o estopim e tentou morder ali, mas ó, oh, esse era um perigo gigantesco. Vai ganhando confiança, parte pra cima, busca mais um. Não deixa a Opt jogar, que olha, oh, estraga prazeres, mas é cansado. Chegar. Olha quem tá embaixo. Passou, ninguém olhou embaixo dele, usa a segunda. Verdade, não precisava fazer mais nada. Isso vem pro próximo round, hein? Aproveita bem ali o cara. Agora o E é forçado a correr. Será que já fez metade? O chão, avança o Sadak, busca esse abate. E uma movimentação esgoto. Vem o segundo. É, essa, 
essa vontade. O Les faz tenta fazer muito. O Sadak morre, aí ele vai avançar. Né? Nessa posição. Defense was the name of the game, as Loud were able to get seven rounds out of 12. Everyone was playing incredible, despite a 7 half 5 and it seems like every round could have gone to either side. With a close game, Loud would need to take advantage of their 2 score lead, and they did extend it to a 4 score lead, but Optic mounted an incredible comeback and even took the lead. Pouco mais ninguém ali, mas já sabe, já entra os jogadores, a casa vai caindo, o Les não! Eu acho que quando a Loud dominou o céu, puxou o ult, ele faz o fight, tem que fazer stopping, tem que fazer stopping. E stop aí o Dito levou primeiro! Ele volta o tempo todo e não gastou o ultimate do Crash, né? Então, pra finalizar ali o Sadak, é o um round mais econômico da Loud e é um ponto tranquilo da Optic que empata o jogo. E aqui, marcando! Só que aí o Victor derruba um. E aí ele deixou pra trás a Spike, mas tomou na cara. Brazil was sweating. As soon as the North American squad were ready to cross the line, Pancada would answer the prayers of Brazilian fans. É muito veneno, Les toma dano no meio do caminho. Meu Deus, a casa cai! A Alpha está avançando, está se garantindo a batida daqui. Busca mais um, mas eles são eliminados e o Pancada nas costas. O Pancada vai garantir o round! Salva a Loud no desespero! Mais atrasado e conseguiu garantir esses dois abates. Ele estava jogando mais para rampa, né? Para segurar o time da, da Optic, se fizesse alguma jogada mais para trás e comemora. This was the match to prove that Reykjavik wasn't a fluke, that Loud were a world championship caliber team, and as soon as Loud thought that they were going to cross the hurdle, Disaster struck. Dentro vem a chegada agora do sombra dele, mas cai o primeiro companheiro. Cai o Sadak também. Com 14 segundos, você tentou se antecipar para garantir os abates contra as costas. O Marvel tá escutando toda a rotação. Malandríssimo ele. Faz a punição. A Optic já tem informação e vai. Não, de Victor vai se encontrar. Ah, situação complicada e a equipe da Alpha inteira está aqui esperando. Cai a Spike agora. Marvel segura o avanço, aspas, sozinho. Ele não tem tempo. Optic would win in overtime, 14-12. Loud were once again sent home empty-handed by their rivals in Optic Gaming. They were only two rounds worse than Optic Gaming. This would be the worst international event that Loud would ever play. Optic seem almost unstoppable. It was hard to play against them because no matter what happened, players like Marv and Ye would simply outmatch them. The meta was definitely lopsided in Optic's favor. Aspas was an amazing jet and race player, but his chamber was a sight that was rarely seen. At Copenhagen, they tried less at the position because of his natural mechanical prowess, but his underperformance really hurt the team's results, and the natural occurrence of event at the group stage didn't help either. Sadak was not ready to change the composition and slot Aspas as the permanent chamber. They had one more chance to show everyone that they were the best team in the world. Loud found themselves in the group stage once again. Zeta Division, Boom Esports, and none other than Optic Gaming would be in the same group again. Loud would have to face Zeta Division, the darlings of Japanese Valorant. Zeta Division had a lead on both maps, with a 7-5 score in each, but Loud would show that they're the better team, and on the second half of both maps, it would be a story of Loud making a comeback and taking the map decisively. Sassi e o Aspas esperando o primeiro, o segundo, fecha o mapa! A Loud sai na frente e vem... And they would beat them handedly with a 2-0 sweep. Optic would then have to play Boom Esports. And let's just say that the mediocre APAC teams were no longer the kryptonite of Optic. I mean... Look at Kashi smiling. He's smiling, but he's kind of he's picking the glasses. He's just smiling. He's just smiling. He's a psychopath. <laughs> Optic vs Loud 4 was upon us, and this time things were slightly different. They were no longer playing for elimination. They were playing to see who would be the first seed from this group. The match started on Breeze. Optic had already been struggling on this map, 
and Loud managed to dissect the weaknesses of Optic at every corner. Just to get past, and there it is, dealt with, so now suddenly Gateway. Any value outside here, well that's just swing through, Mark completely unaware. Yeah, this, and, and now look how isolated they are from each other, Vicky oh has to God. swing and he loses, but he gets oh, the oh. tag, and oh, lap! So deep, they're just ready to absorb it, and all this utility, it's, all, it's choreographed. They, they know as soon as contact comes through. What Surely this doesn't even happen for him. It's going to be halfway, he's going to try and do what he can, it feels inevitable, Loud finally convert through, but 13 to 7. Loud had humbled Optic on Breeze. The map would end 13-7. This was Loud's opportunity to slay their foe in the group stage. On Fracture, Loud would play another composition again. And this time, Aspasos on Raze, Saucy on Fade, Sadak on Viper, Les on Chamber, and Pancara on Omen. Loud would for the first time ever gain the lead on Optic on Fracture. And while Loud did gain the lead off of the incredible plays from Saucy, it's coming back and trying to be the hero! Oh my god! And Saucy! He's, he's still got the standing! On it. And he's still defusing! Oh and my got the god! Round. Optic would quickly tie the score at half, thanks to El Diablo. Finds less, but there's a player close by and he's still doing this. He has to be the protagonist in this story. Zanak this reloading! Round, what? Zanak completely unaware. And yay, this three could be on for the ace if he gets the timing right. He knows it! He reads it like a book! Yay is an animal in these moments! Just one more and it looks so good with Ye doing this! <laughs> Loud regained the lead with the pistols and after losing round after round, Optic would feel the pressure. Even after a timeout, that wasn't enough. Optic were crumbling. Loud could feel the victory, and just as they thought that they were about to get their revenge, Optic pulls out a thrifty out of nowhere. The first shot, it wasn't clean, it wasn't pretty, but it's job done. Optic still in this one. And now Optic were enabled in their economy once again. And Ye was once again turning out to be the foil for Loud. To this one. Flash can come in, the spike's gone down, and Crashies, oh my word, Crashies, two huge kills, cracks open the site, and now Les is dead, and FNS leading the way back through. Optic are not down, and certainly not out yet. Fate, and that Nightfall came through, so they've lost out on that, and Optic starting to turn the screws here. If Optic are going to find 11, okay, they want to seal the deal. Optic had regained their lead, and now Loud had to call a timeout. But out of it, Victor leads the team into match point. So well, Victor's challenging, he's got you dead to rights, and the follow-up is divine! Oh, and look at them just shutting this down! And Crashies finishes out the next round. Down just yet, they're trying to take the fight! Oh my and god! And it's denied! Crashies! Optic taking us all the way, third map unlocked. It's 1-1, and we're down to the last map. And unlike the previous matches, we would play on the newly added map of Pearl. No one knew exactly what was going to happen. And what we got, well, it was unexpected. Best just clearing Pillar, just third towards Cubby. And it does bode well to try and hold on to the side. He moves a little bit of that comfort away, and this is perfect. What a shot down so far. Optic, a little bit of freedom to maybe get the ball. Yay! Somehow gets his feet on the ground and gets the kill. Sarsi is given no time, no moments, no breath at all. He's also now get a freebie in terms of the first one as well. And I, I Oh my word, it's finesse! That's all it takes at times! Um, finesse is just standing and standing and delivering to get past. They can try as they might. They might just play the clock and they don't. They play the player 9 to 3. This has been a clinic from Optic. An absolute masterclass. And this wall, once again, it's almost conditioned of whether or not Optic are going to take you know, control of anything. Loud was completely lost on Pearl as no one would get close to a positive KD. Optic would not let go of their lead. It would just spiral out of control. Oh, Sassy <laughs> tries again. He's just toying with him, man. You can't do this to them. Optic make it to 13. The game would end at 13-3. Loud was once again foiled by Optic. Was El Diablo too strong? Was Marv too cold? Was FNS too smart? Well, this would actually be the perfect time for Loud to lose a game. If you think about it, Loud walked in with a new composition on Fracture and had no clue what kind of monster 
Optic were on Pearl. By gaining this information in the group stage match, if Loud beat Zeta Division, and if they met Optic in the future, they would benefit from knowing this information. Loud were in danger of being eliminated, but they had just played what was one of the top teams in the world. Loud needed to rebound to qualify for playoffs, and Loud were determined to prove that they are the team to beat. Zeta Division would bring it to Loud. On the map of Bind, the half would end at a 7-5 score, and it would be tied up at 7-7 on round 14, and Zeta looked like they were going to make a comeback. But Loud were having none of that. Loud was able to beat Zeta Division on round 23 with an Aspas 3k, and Loud closed it out on the next round. Ascent would be complete domination on the part of Loud. They would not allow Zeta Division to even gain a lead aside from the pistol rounds. And Loud felt like they were right at home. Loud knew that this was do or die and they were not going to die to Zeta Division. Aspas does the Oh dodge. my god! Oh, he finally goes down! Deck does get the better of him, just about! And now he looks towards the side, they're trying to come towards that B side, and the spray, and the spray from Sassy! And someone's archering this time, leaving just Crow alive in a 1v3, the reveal towards CT, and he just can't do it! Zeta's heart's broken, but loud roar their way through the game! The first round of playoffs was against Leviathan. Loud would struggle on the attack side, and Aspas on Chamber was not as efficient as you thought he might be. They can't even win a buy-up round, and Leviathan seems to be in control of the game. It's 12-6, and it seems like Loud are going to lose Icebox. But something incredible happens. Is doing so much work for them, now just down to Adversal, the 1v2, dodging, juking, playing the movement around, Maze, less. He finds his target and ends their way on towards A. Gets it out, not a lot of time remaining for it though, and a great one from Pankada to Melter, but he knows positioning now. And Aspas, far too talented individually. He has been an absolute maniac, and the shots are fired. One after the other, only three players left standing. But do they have enough to try and offset it with the Viper's pit online? Is a snake by what a peak by Aspas! And they can hear it, the diffuse is online. A triple swing, sticking it, sticking it, sticking it! Oh, you got to be kidding me! King did the most! Three kills to try and stop it! But Lau just had too many layers, and they brought it to OT! Like they were in complete control of this map, and it has been wrestled back! What a phenomenal play by Sadak! Push back this play, flash over the top, and Verso just did not know where he was looking, and a spray down! A tip tap of the rifle, whatever you want to call it, Pankata is doing so much work, and he's laid it down for them now. The defuse comes through, nothing in sight to stop it. What a comeback for Loud to win map number one. Loud eviscerated the lead that Leviathan had gotten, and in overtime, Loud would close out the map. 14-12. On Haven, things would seem more competitive in the first half, but Haven has always been an attack map. Leviathan, even with the attack, could not get more than 5 rounds, and Loud destroyed them on the attack, only allowing them to win the bonus. Loud, once again, had shown that they were not only the best team in Brazil, but they were also the best team of Latin America. But their next opponent was also the best in their region. DRX were widely considered the best team in APAC, and for good reason. Mako was in the conversation as the best controller player in the game. Stax was becoming a brilliant IGL. Zest was frying on the initiator role. And Buzz and RB were great players. Loud had never faced a team from APAC before, so this was a sight to see. The game started off awful for Loud. DRX had ran through Loud, and a 9-3 scoreline looked grim for the Brazilian squad. But Loud showed us in the previous match against Leviathan that they had the resilience to power through a massive deficit. Sassy, first point of contact perhaps, and a follow-up by Mako makes a super cost space. A crazy final shot as well, and they actually dealt with what was quite a dangerous position better than I expected. I, I think the 
fact that Marco gets past it, but then just being spotted by the drum. Gonna be desperately low through a pancada. It's just killing them off. He like his, and they need to get rid of him, and they just can't. That's for that. 1860. Yeah. Yeah. Map one in the previous series before that. 60 to try a battle for Brawl, and unfortunately, for B, the operator in, and he's gone! What a shot from Sadek! Everything. Two 1v1s almost being taken. Les is gonna put one down. It's down to Stacks again. He tries to bait the swing, but it's all over. Loud. Every team has struggled to close out map one versus DRX. Les and Pancada, alongside the calling of Sadak, had shaken the foundation of the Korean squad. And much like in the match versus Leviathan, the pressure of the fumble had gotten to DRX. Map 2 would end with Loud once again dominating after the comeback. And it's falling apart! Loud are able to close it with three quick kills! And for the second time, they will be going to the upper finals versus a North American team! Loud were once again incredibly close to the precipice of the Champions Tournament. But, much like the previous event where they made it incredibly deep, Optic Gaming was waiting for them at the upper final. Optic Gaming were running through everybody. They had beat Team Liquid 2-1, upset the future of Valorant in Xset, and all they had to do was what they did the previous three times they faced Loud. Beat them. Loud had learned from their previous matches with Optic that Pearl and Fracture were major problems. Loud obviously banned Pearl, while Optic banned Icebox and Optic chose Bind instead of Fracture as they felt that Bind was their home map. And now, Loud had the advantage of being able to ban Fracture. The two maps that Optic were the best at were gone, and to make things worse for them, the decider map for the match would be Breeze, which Optic had been struggling the entire tournament. Arv is coming to swing on through and crashes. It's a little awkward at first, but he numbers to take this, but in dangerous positions, the dropout, another potential retake, same position. They found value in before, what? but not enough to kill. Less is alone, and even with a beautiful dropout. Weapon. This time they get it correct, and I actually want to see Optic challenge a little bit more for that hooker control, because I think that's where the crux of the matter is, is you had now a side with three players to take down, and Pancada has just had another fantastic round. It, it seemed like it was just going swimmingly, but just this reset coming out from Optic, falling all the way back and then going back into the site. The execution was great, but Pancada just able to hold on to some of the most critical angles as they look for that retake through hooker. I think that this will be a round where, okay, let's see how far we can get. Maybe that's the more surprising thing, like just making that move fairly early, almost disrespecting a lot of the utility on the other side after they initially again tried to touch player in the past, but his HP already at half, three players, and it's the first to take him down. They'll rotate, but Aspas has kept the control! Aspas alone wins this round for loud four kills! Line, it's... Well, oh, wait! He's got two! Kill of the round! He's going absolutely nuclear! Loud went to war with Optic Gaming. These teams knew each other's playstyle incredibly well, and neither of them backed off. We would get a 6-6 half, and everyone's KDs were incredibly similar to each other want to run into yay in an elevated angle he gets the freebie onto the planter it's not an angle you'd normally clear but the fact is he's just delayed them so much even with a single kill they've had to completely reset the plant and the trades are going again in optics favor or at least they were less has managed to turn it back but what a couple of headshots out from him it's good that they don't lose anyone also the fact that less already has a viper's pit online one of the most deadly ultimates you can have going line, which is now only one away. They're coming in with a purchase on the other side, and okay, sure, you've got the showstopper, but there's not a lot that's actually going to help them out economically. Very true. Yeah, look, the losses here will definitely be felt, those ripples coming into the next few rounds, and ultimately, Prime will just be to try and find a kill, and damn, this is aggressive from Optic on the other side of the map, pushing all the way through. Likely, it's being watched by Ye. The ulti in hand, it's going down from above. Marv has taken the kills, and with that, 
probably the round. They need a plan right now, and it will be denied four seconds as they should come all the way back through and have those separate peaks with the denial utility. That was an every single battle. It's left on to Pancada. He has delayed them a little oh. bit. The shot connected eventually, and I think the time is gone. He might have just done it off of that alone. It's moved. It looks like a trap, and Sanaki so desperately low. He's going to go down straight away. The orb sections the remaining players apart, and the spike is down on the site. Still loud. Get to take a few steps closer. They've lost a player, and then oh. they've recovered. What are those fights for Sanic with a double kill? Optic are now having to play Reed. Oh! It's almost a couple of kills coming through, but they just wipe out the remaining players. A faster play in towards that mid portion. The battle's being won by Sadak and Pankada. Loud are gonna take themselves by. Loud would have the upper hand on Optic Gaming almost every round that they play. And this would lead Loud to win the first map, 13-10. Loud were once again one map off of an international grand final. And they were ready to go to hell and back to win it. All this sort of stuff, and sometimes that's true, but... I, you cannot take anything away from Loud. They are playing such a clean game. It was tangible from... Changed it up again and again! Ye is shut down! He's not given a chance to play the round! Loud of the advantage, and they played on site. This Cosmic Divide doesn't lock them out nearly as much as Optic would hope it does. Instead, they're willing to fight, losing the duels. Two versus three. Only the man underneath now remain with Pankata finding one, and Sassy trickling up in the round! We go back in for this peak. He does, but he loses the fight. And they know roughly where Les is going to be. He's just sticking this defusal, looking to try and get it all the way. And he lets go and lands the headshot. This man has been unstoppable this series. And 12 and 9 match points. T seconds to play with Asbaz. He lands the ball. A She's even taken to half HP and it's left onto him to try and clutch this out. But Aspas has had enough. A knife needed to be connected, but instead it's less to put them down. Loud dominate Optic. Loud had done it. They had finally beat their rivals in Optic Gaming. And they had one more game to be crowned the Valorant World Champions. But much like in life, it's not as easy as it seems. Optic Gaming once again was on the brink of elimination, and they were sent into the lower finals against DRX. Optic Gaming had one objective, and that was to be cemented into the annals of history as the greatest team of all time, and to be the first team to acquire a Masters and a Champions trophy. Hell itself would have to freeze over to stop Optic Gaming, and in the lower finals, Ye would show why he is named El Diablo. It's time. The answer was yay. Look at that 2k. Perfect. Just magic. Finding the first one and then killing the player tried to trade him. But he does not take the shot. Taking matters into his own hands. Space is going to be gained, but you still need to deal with El Diablo. Now the Nightfall scattered across. And that Nightfall, I think it caught Victor as well. Potentially one just. Yay, no! Still locks down the angle. Jumping down onto the site, and again, yay strikes. Body block trailblazers, broke the horn, set for them and they're sort of back. What, oh, what a spray! The no spray way. is denied! One after another! This was maybe in show on the side! Oh, that's brilliant, but oh, what? what? Chris being taken by Mako, but eventually he will also go down. Map number one goes the way of Optic. I'll be left up to his own devices, but that's not what I'm seeing. I am seeing an Optic that are playing much better than the last three times we've seen them on Breeze at Champs. I am seeing an Optic that is refusing to lose. This is a team. The only one in the running. He's been doing it so much. And again! Get away through double doors. No commando popped off. That is going has just been perfect. One after the other. They all crumble. But if the might and weight of Optic. Uh, play to the back, yay. In a danger, or is he? Yellow, he's just contacting into it. The sightline by pushing themselves into deeper angles, holding with the operators. <laughs> Yo, what I just did to Mako? This kid's retiring after this game. I'm 30, bro! It's the 9th of the time being. He 
seats around the corner and Ye was watching it. From the side of the wall, Optic. Every avenue, every line of sight is just locked down. And Breeze, well, it wasn't their map pick, but these guys, they are feeling it. They've made it their territory today. Forward play by Marvs, he's making all the risks in the world, but not enough to take the map away. 1v5. All the utility use, and as soon as the wall goes down, DRX will not be denied. Gonna be a close Ash, and it's just a pre fire from Ye. This time he tucks really deep in the corner, where he can try to punish Buzz. And we're about to take place back away to by Ye! Beat the slow field on no, the spray down. Maybe just assuming that the flash had forced Ye to. What you expect from him? A masterclass performance. of them as well. What a beautiful running back from Vic. But Optic, moments away from carving their rightful spot in the Grand Finals. And there it is! Optic Gaming had secured their spot in Grand Finals once again. History was repeating itself. All roads led to Optic versus Loud 6. say that Loud and Optic knew each other would be an understatement. This feud was years in the making. It seems like they were mirrors of each other in terms of talent and skill. Loud and Optic faced each other five times before this encounter, and Optic had won three out of the five matches. But despite Loud's recent victories, Optic had always bested them when it mattered the most. The matches between these two were always close, and the fan bases were rabid about this grand final, and thus the community would coin this match. It was only fitting that the last chapter of 2022 would end with two of the greatest teams to ever be assembled. The final chapter was about to begin. Optic vs Loud at Grand Finals El Clasico. The battle starts and for the Brazilians it felt like they were right in the spot they had been with in Optic for the entire year. On Ascent, Optic are playing the defense side as though they're playing the attack. Loud are rocked at the start of the match. But after a timeout, they managed to negate the aggression by Optic and managed to get the score up to a 7-5 half. The unthinkable. Uh, FNS hasn't crossed with the spike. There's a cooldown here where the smokes aren't available. You can even see here, Les is taking a double class. He's like, wait, what? Wait. Loud know that this is their home map. And with a deficit, they lock in and manage to get two after the bonus. It's 8-9. Yeah, lesser weapons just being mowed through. It's now down to Marvd and FNS. Just the last one here remaining. But Optic were on a roll and managed to bring it to map point. But Loud should never be counted out. What sassy dead? He can't do it! Les is there! And Les is still standing! A massive difference. We had to scrape together a couple of rifles, but the utility will suffer. The missing shields on the side of Marv. It's a broken purchase here in round 24. But Optic need to make this Oh start. my god! And it's a purchase, an absolute spray down between Les and Sarsi. They have no idea. And Ashbass makes his debut on the round. And this is just. Optic exceeding expectations. Loud. Like I said, I don't even feel as if they're going to deny it. And actually, Ashbass is the one to get aggressive right on back in. Silence in FNS and putting it back down to the 3v3, but they're walking wounded. Victor dives on in! And dives right back, back on out of the round. What is going on? One by one! Oh Lord, my god! Three players! Oh my word, it's Jay! You have got to be kidding me! They're running along with blood time! With 7 HP, he's charging down on the side! Oh, oh it's my god! It's not enough! Sassy! What is Dusty made of? Optic falters in the attack round, and this is the opening Loud needed. Standing in the open, taking the fight, and Loud take the round, 15 to 13. Loud in the previous encounter had schooled Optic on their home map of Bind, but Optic always get their revenge. And on Bind, Optic would have a chokehold of the map completely. And in this half here for Loud, because sitting on two rounds is not enough. Now, we already noted this is a bad map for them. This is where they best optic before. But I think the pace up, turn the heat up. And again, yay, this opener. 
saving this in case that maybe, you know, that Molly came in, denied the plant even further. There was so much potential. They're in now for round 12. Hankala was waiting half a week to find that flash. Didn't even, didn't We're even, at 1.6. Good. good for one. Oh my god. One for two. And now just the 1v1. Not the correct guess. Victor, none the wiser. Forced to pull the trigger. Oh, what? Aspas. The unthinkable again. The 1v3 in the final seconds. A little bit more vulnerable. They're going to flood on forward. Marv there though. Good to sight. The timing. Oh, he's got a shot in it. Marv does have his ult. He's going to invest in. And it's just bad shadows. This man is always behind them. And the tides. And he's been found! FNS has him! 13 to 6, Mike. That was a big performance from Optic. It's 1 1, and we're going to the map of Breeze. Breeze starts out favoring Optic. Loud are down 6 1. But for as good as Optic is, Loud is equally as good. I mean, if they can, if they can maybe string a couple more together, more than happy to see it close in a little bit. Now looking at the Right there it is, goes in and the swing. It's gorgeously done! Sadak! They've carved Whoa. themselves the perfect start to this round! Coming out of this Pancana, you gotta do something to save your team. He's gonna have to pull the trigger on the foot. Up here, spike down, down the double swing! Finally! And they tie up the game 6-6. Six, six. Back and forth we go, and the two teams once again prove why both of them are in the conversation for best in the world. Why this is El Clásico of Valorant. Why Aspas and Ye are considered the best in the world. Round for round we go. Mekala with his Bulldog has to go huge and he's found the spike crashes. Will fall just by our victor as well. A little bit of damage to follow up. The second kill there, FNS tries to risk going huge for Optic. The second here onto Aspas as well. Resets to this position. Perfect read on the timing by Pillar, spots one, takes one. Trade comes in, it's all on Ye. Now the problem starts to really mount and look, but it seems to go beyond that. It seems to not care if they're on a thrifty or if they're on a full buy, if they have ults or not. It is back and forth. And if it keeps going through, oh, that's a spike now seen as well. So telling at this time. The rest of the team is on the way through caves, and just so well, punishing it. Oh, can you believe it? Aspas beheads crashes, and the other two turn plan. They're looking towards B, they want none of what he's selling. And off towards B we go. Victor and FNS, can you close it or is it OT again? Less, the angle is gorgeous. The kill towards Victor, the follow up is there. It's deserved at this point. It's going OT. And no one budges. 12-12. We are going into overtime. Optic win, Loud win. Loud win. Optic win. But once again, Loud finds that overtime is better for them. That's what he's desperate for. Another attempt and another death. And no more OTs. Loud. Finally get across the line here. But this is a marathon of a game, Mike. And now Loud have won their second map. For the first time in a best of five, Loud are ahead of Optic. They can feel the frustration emanating from their rivals. They can feel the glory. The championship, the trophy, and it fuels them. That's a found kills. Aspas over the top now. He's found Yay! He's found Marv. It's just instantaneous. What? It's ridiculous. And that's the plan from the get-go. You see his suit. Peeling away from the A side. They're ready for this B fight. They were here so fast. Aspas, he is making himself such a problem. The paint shell on the way out. But he's done the damage. FNS has three to find! In time where there's four people left standing to retake a site. Who moves first? They have no clue! Unless! How is he doing this? Time and time again! Breaking Optic's heart! But then now this plays on Mock. Does he know the one close through Garage? He absolutely has! And with 40 HP! He's done the unthinkable! He's taken them to 12! It's do or it's die, and it's a double stack towards Sua. Pancada already ripping the head off of Ye's shoulders. Would they predict the second? Oh, what? yes they do! Pancada! They've got so much utility to work with again. Pancada and Aspas have both found one. It's all on one. The last man standing at Finesse. And after so much time, so many years of heartbreak at the hands of Optic, Loud beat them in the best possible way becoming the Valorant 2022 champion what a moment
that Loud had done it. At the end of the year, they showed everyone that they were the best team in the world. And despite their shortcomings at Reykjavik and at Copenhagen, the Brazilian region needed to be respected. Pancada y Amigos joined the biggest org in Brazil, dominated the region, proved that they were one of the top teams in the world, overcame their nemesis in Optic Gaming, and won the World Championship. Les, Sasi, Pancada, Sarak, Aspas, and their coach, Bazooka, had reached the pinnacle of Valorant. Their story was finished. Since Valorant was moving into franchising, no team was safe in being chosen or denied for partnership. Optic ended up disbanding, and the rivalry would end at a 3-3 finish, each one gaining a trophy. Loud would be forced to make roster changes as two of their players would leave the organization, and the next year for Loud would look completely different. But that is a story for another day. So where are they now? Aspas continues to be one of the greatest duelists to ever play the game. He played in Leviathan for an entire year and almost won his second Champions Trophy. Les would continue to play with Loud until the year of 2024, where he would eventually sign with Vitality. Sadak, like Les, would also remain in Loud for a very long time, until the year of 2024, where he signed with Carmine Core. Pancada would be one of the players who would go to a different team, but would eventually return in the year of 2024 to rejoin Loud. And Saucy, well, he would retire in the year of 2024 after almost capturing another world championship and winning the Masters Madrid trophy. This was the story of the greatest Brazilian roster to ever be assembled, Loud. Fazer 